What is good with y'all, man? SGG family, it's your boy Smooth Got Game. Who's it? No. <laughs> Sometimes my phone be over it, so we can make a noise. But it's your boy Smooth Got Game, aka not GM Smooth anymore, but head coach Smooth, man. We are back on this Madden, and you guys can see from the trailer, from the title, we are about to get into our franchise. Finally, after a long MLB series, man, uh, thank you guys for showing all love and support over there. We are going to get into a new series here with the Indianapolis coaches there. I had like just looked at a couple of regular season things to you know see what was going on. And it looks like they have it already set up where we can start pretty much where it is in real life. I mean, at the time of recording this, the divisional rounds are getting kicked off this Sunday. So shout out to the Ravens who won like I thought they would. And shout out also to, uh, it's just, right. okay, it's showing like the wild card homers. So shout out to the Ravens that won like that I thought they would, as well as who else won that night? The 49ers. Although made it close, the Packers, well, the Packers was putting in some work there, man. But hey, they made it close. So that'll be where we're getting started off here for this series. And I'll put in those wins and losses so that way it's kind of done up. But this will be a brand new series where we will be taking over a team that I feel like finished above and below expectations. The Indianapolis Colts, at least for me, preseason, I did not think this was going to be anywhere close to a playoff talented roster. I thought Anthony Richardson would have a great season, but just kind of, you know, fall a little bit short of where the Jaguars are. Um, and really, I thought the rest of the AFC would kind of just take off. I thought the Jaguars would take the division and the rest of the AFC would take off. But CJ Stroud had an amazing season and Anthony Richardson actually got hurt, didn't even get a chance to perform, but was showing out pretty well in the first couple of games that he did play. So then they overperformed. Now they're looking like they might be in the playoffs and then it just fell short in the very last game, losing to the uh, Texans, not able to crack a wild card spot. So we'll be taking over them. A pretty interesting task here for me, as I feel like that I've always kind of took over a team, uh, need a quarterback to start the rebuild and kind of done up from that way. So this time around, we have our quarterback put in place. So we're just going to be, let's see, team builder. The backstory gives you secret stuff or eye for talent. Do I want to build staff or team? Definitely a team builder. Um, I mean, my staff is what it is, but I'm definitely gonna be a team builder. Uh, and the coach for this series, man, we're gonna bring back a, a nostalgic favorite because we're gonna be very sneaky about how we work on offense and defense. Our young man, Sly Cooper, is gonna be the head coach of this team. He's gonna teach us how to swipe these dubs and how to take from the rich and give to the poor and needy. You know what I'm saying? Like ourselves, I put, I put copper. <laughs> I didn't even spell Cooper right. My fault, y'all. But hey, this is how the series will kind of be going, man. I did put a poll up, so make sure you guys get to it and answer that. For your board, leave it in the comment section down below. Do you guys want this series to be uh, slow sim, like it has been with the other ones? Or do you guys want me to hop back on the sticks and play? And we'll do post commentary stuff for that. So this is what you'll get if you decide that you want me to uh, do slow sim. Me on camera. Uh, me, Osman, rocking out with you guys. Now, of course, there'll be times where we, you know, we cut different stuff out and things like that. Obviously, like, I don't want y'all to have to sit here and watch me, you know, edit up my coach real quick. So I'll be right back. And here we are, man. Our guy, Sly Cooper, looking kind of young. We want to put the sweater on him because I feel like Indianapolis is, is, I feel like it's cold, you know, mo most of the football season, you know, being up there. In the, I don't even want to mess up where I think Indianapolis is, but I'm pretty sure it's just a cold weather state. It's not, I, I wouldn't say it's a warm weather state at all. We're going to run, obviously, the same offensive defense, though. We're going to keep it on Indianapolis for right now before I make any changes to it. I did make some changes, though, to the offensive playbook that I did want to add in. Because I did, you know, went ahead and took a look at this team just briefly, off of at least what I know I want to do with the way that the team is currently set up with basically our quarterback. So I added a couple plays in that I wanted to see him run, regardless of whether I'm playing or not. Uh, Obviously, we'll change up the league settings and all that stuff when I get in. But basically, how the series is going to work is what you guys decide that you want it to be. If we're going to be playing and hopping on the sticks, we're going to play the games. It's going to be slow sim. We'll be slow simming and sim fully simulating some weeks to kind of get through the seasons faster. We'll still go through it pretty quickly if I play them. I mean, even if it's like, a, let's say it's a dead season, we're four and seven, not looking like we're making the playoffs. We'll put two or three games into one video, a uh, highlight style. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll find ways to get through seasons quickly and rebuild this team ultimately to make yet another dynasty on the team. So let's go ahead and get things started up here with the Indianapolis Colts. And like I said, a couple of key pieces on this roster. We have a great running back, a good receiver, a good top two receivers actually, as uh, you see, I could choose draft class, scout players, Obviously, we'll handle all that kind of stuff here in a second, but I at least want to talk about the team really quick. You know, do a lot of stuff without you guys being on camera. Here today, we're just kind of introducing the team. We're not going to get into the offseason yet here today, but I do want to show y'all what we're working with. And so far, you know, the top guys on the team, Quentin Nelson, 
superstar of guard. We have Jonathan Taylor, the all talented young running back that I think will be, you know, a key center point to this team. And hopefully we're able to, you know, keep him around and everything like that. Uh, but if we look like his stats, for example, I mean, my boy has been fantastic his first two years over a thousand. You see the attempts really kind of cut down these past two years with injuries and stuff like that, missing games. But he's going to be a thousand yard rusher for us. He's going to be a big play threat for us. And now that we have a quarterback that's mobile, I'll tell you, those read offs is about to be dumb, stupid for my boys. So we've got him on the roster. The DBs, we need to build up. We at least have a good centerpiece here with Kenny Moore Jr. Got a great D line here with Stewart and DeForest Buckner. And like I said, receiving core, Michael Pittman Jr. We'll look at that more individually, but here, the key centerpiece, man. The position I don't have to worry about this time around, Anthony Richardson, our quarterback of the future, 21 years old. He had plenty of time to develop. It sucks that he missed out on his rookie year development. You know, he did do a little bit of work. He's got hidden depth, so it's probably gonna be like star or something like that, especially with him being hurt most of the year. Uh, the games that he did play, we had three touchdowns, one interception, almost 600 yards through just two games, four rushing touchdowns to go along with that. I think it was just two games that he needed to play, right? Oh no, five. Okay, five games. Uh, I mean, all of them were pretty impressive, obviously, except for this one against the Texans, which I think he might've got hurt mid game too, because he didn't really have that much there. Then he fully got out for the season, week five. Yeah, that's right. It was a concussion. The end of week two was out week three, came back week four, balled, then week five, obviously the the rotary cuff tear for us so you know he's gonna be quarterback of the future i feel like we got two really good running backs up here not only jonathan taylor but zach moss to take the workload off a little bit and don't forget about ohio state running back trey sermon like he hasn't really proven anything that he can do just yet not incredibly fast uh, acceleration is there though on jonathan taylor's level we need to work on his ball carrier vision i mean he's got to work on some stats here to actually show me why he needs to make the field but baseline you know could have three burning wrecks here potentially to kind of rotate around, but it's gonna be mainly Jonathan Taylor taking almost like 90% of the snaps. No fullback here on this team with the way the, the play uh, the playbook is set up. There's honestly no need for a fullback actually, so I'm probably gonna leave that position zeroed. Now receivers love what Josh Downs did his rookie year. I think he was third as far as all rookie receivers in terms of total yardage. And then right behind him Alex Pierce. So this is kind of a really good top three here. We also got Isaiah McKenzie once he comes back from his injury. And then obviously you know Michael Pittman Jr., the highly talented USC uh, receiver that's been their main number one target for years. He's going to continue to be the number one we build forward with. But Josh Downs has a very good option here to be a good one-two punch. Not only 90 speed, I wish it was a little bit better, so we had a bigger speed threat. But there's your outside, there's your inside. Boom, we're gonna work with that. The position I think we need the most though here, tight end. Mole Cox is uh, a good player, a sure player, uh, but I don't think he's for the future, man. I mean, only 73 overall to what, 29 years old. I don't think our tight end of the future is on this roster. So tight end will be a position that we look at. Offensive line, I'm looking across the board. Everybody's kind of pretty young except for our center, but pretty young and good. So whole line is looking very good. Maybe get some more better depth behind him in case there are injuries. D-line, I'm loving what we got here. Quiddy Pay, obviously, the highly talented uh, guy out of Michigan that they drafted two seasons ago. Really good edge rusher for him right now. Then Samson and Bukem, he'll be on the other side with the two defensive tackles right up the middle. I think our D-line is secured. What we need to work on is our linebacker core. Stewart needs to get replaced. We need a new left outside linebacker. Franklin is okay, but I need some more depth behind it. We can't just survive with just two middle linebackers. And then EJ Speed is an okay right outside linebacker too as well. Just needs some more depth to kind of recover for that age. He's, he's 28 years old. You're going to start to see some regression there too as well. And then DBs, outside of Kenny Moore Jr., it needs a lot of fixing. I mean, we have Julian Blackman. He's hurt right now, but we'll have Julian Blackman back. Ron Harrison Jr., if you guys remember from the Jet Series, is a beast that's strong safety. So, I mean, shoot, he might even be moved over to play free safety so we can find this replacement over here because it ain't on roster. So, got some work to do. Secondary, linebackers, so mostly on defense uh, and then shoring up our tight end spot. But outside of that, I think we're fine. We have all of our picks this season, no extra, no less. And we're picking at the 15th spot. So, I think this team has a long ways to go to go ahead and be successful. And what we ultimately try to do here is we try to build dynasties. We're not just trying to go get that one Super Bowl ring, right? We want to get two. We want to get three. We want to at least be in a position where we're easily taking the division on a back-to-back-to-back year basis. You know what I'm saying? We're building a dynasty, not just one team, not just one championship, but we will get everything done. Obviously, I got my contract extension. I love that three years, five million. <laughs> uh, but we're going to have to fill the staff. We're going to have to you know, choose our draft classes. Let me go ahead and... Uh, I'm gonna set and import in my settings so I can show you guys what those look like, as well as get my draft class set up so we can see what that's looking like, see where our, some of our main points of focus can be. And we'll go ahead and take early looks at those. 
really quick. Let me go ahead and be right back. Now that we're back, I got all the stuff imported in that I needed to. So I'll go ahead and quickly show you guys kind of what I'm working with. You know, shout out to uh, Mr. Hurricane and Matt 10 uh, for these slider sets that I went ahead and found. Uh, they seem to make the game a little bit more realistic. Did a couple of tests on my own. I liked kind of how it turned out. So here we got different progressive ratings for different positions. Obviously, you know, the lower where they're able to put up a whole bunch of stats as opposed to some of the other ones or you know to at least reflect what real life kind of happens where you see guys progress quickly or faster slower uh, not only to mention the different age ranges that they actually progress you know a lot of heavy over production here in the first five years of their career basically you know going from 20 to 25 that's when you're really getting a lot of your growth that's where the superstars are made by that point of 25 you kind of basically at least seemingly in most people's eyes hit peak and then from 26 to 29 you're kind of at your you're basically at your peak right there that's kind of your, your peak four years you're not really going up too too much more dramatically after that then in your 30s that's when you kind of start to regress until you're either out of the league around somewhere around these four ages right here now of course it's also got regression rate changed for different positions so like halfbacks and receivers you know it's are pretty high i mean those are pretty much positions where you live at the top for maybe about two three seasons and then you kind of fall off you know Odell Beckham Jr. at one point was considered a top five receiver. Now he's like the Baltimore Ravens third. My, my boy caught one pass in yesterday's ball game in the uh, in the um, divisional round. Uh, caught one pass, had one target. At one point was a top five receiver. So you can, and he's not old. He's not old, and he can still make plays. But you see, kind of like the the fall off there for careers. Derrick Henry, top running backs in the game. Didn't have that good of a year. I should know he was on my fantasy team. Didn't have that good of a year this year. So, you know, kind of giving the chance for newer guys to kind of step in, uh, play a little bit better. Uh, that way you can draft people and they actually come in and start to, you know, really kind of ball. So here's the different age regressions. You see, like I said, kind of everything stays baseline. Then they really start regressing after these, these like little last three years. So that's how my progressive XP sliders kind of work. So that way you can get more realistic uh, feel for it. You get more younger players kind of jumping into the game. And it's not just like the same guys at the top for 10 plus seasons because Lord knows that don't, don't even really happen for quarterback, honestly. Here goes my uh, league settings, 13 minute simulation, all Madden, 15 minute play clocks. We got, you know, all cooldowns turned off because even if I play the sticks, I'm not going to be, I'm not that dude who's calling the same plays over and over again. I don't even play online like that, uh, to be honest with you. Got everything in full manual control. Uh, got the tutorials turned off and everything like that. The more interesting stuff is kind of down here. Here it is. Free agent uh, motivation impact, we have it on high, trade difficulty, we have it on hard, just so that way that those things aren't easy for us. You know, we have to really kind of not oversell, but it makes it a little more realistic. I'm not going to be able to, you know, whether you agree with him or not last year, you know, I remember we traded Jared Goff for it, number one overall pick. Should that have been it? the way he's balling right now? Probably could work, but should that have happened last year? Who knows? So we up that to hard, we up the free agent modifiers to high. So that way, if they're not interested in coming to us, we, we are going to have to throw out some more bread if we really want that player to kind of eat into that player salary and that cap space. Staff talent cost modifier, we got that going slow because we obviously don't want to max out our, uh, you know, our side coaches or even ourselves in the first three, four seasons. Like I said, this is going to be a long series and we're going through many seasons here. So that way we can try to get through all stages of it, really build this dynasty up and kind of take our time progressing some of these young players, get really kind of built into them. The one thing I do have different that I know most people don't do, I got coach firing on. If I'm not doing my job, there could, this could very well end up being a series where I get fired off the team, I'm going somewhere else to rebuild. I think that adds a little bit more of an interesting dynamic. Does Coach Cooper ever get fired and have to go start somewhere else and start his tenure over with a different team and rebuild? I think that could lead to like a little fun scenario if that were to ever happen. Nothing else here kind of changes. Everything else is kind of baseline after that. Uh, field roster, let me turn that off. I do not want the CPU automatically signing. Um, yeah, do not want them signing anybody. <laughs> I, want that, I want that to go ahead and turn off immediately. I do not need the CPU signing random undrafted free agents to my team that i have no use for just eating up my cap space for no reason uh the very last thing would be gameplay sliders uh also got this off my of ten uh, off of the madden forums so this is just supposed to make it a little bit more realistic if we do end up playing this kind of helps out with balancing actually getting good games in uh keeping it to where the cpu isn't cheesing all the time you know kind of lowering a lot of their stuff you know they actually especially on all madden they're really 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 good and honestly you have to kind of throw in those cheese plays those cheap plays that you be hearing about online. You got to kind of use those in these actual games to be able to have decent games to be able to win. So wanted to make it all fair. So that way I'm not in here just cheesing. And we leave it up to the player ratings to actually be good. Because that's what this series is going to be about. It's going to be about players being good, developing. And I'm just here as Coach Cooper. So when y'all see me 
in this series. I know I'm wearing a Saints shirt, so I'm playing for the wrong team right now, but this will always be the number one favorite. As you can see right there, Slot Cooper signs in Indianapolis Colts. Cooper's already started reviewing how they improve the roster. And they are not wrong because, like I said, this team has a lot of holes that it needs to fill. Um, we'll obviously change the wins and losses of the playoffs to reflect what's going on in real life before the uh, series gets dropped. Hopefully these divisional rounds start before I try to do the second episode, which will be the off season. I wish that will be post commentary be done because I'm not about to have y'all, unless we did it on a live stream, I'm not going to have y'all sit here while I'm thinking through every strategy. I'm going to record the off season, come back and do post commentary on it, unless you guys would like to see a live stream style. Y'all can definitely let me know that. Now here, scouted players, I wanted to make sure that I jumped through this at the last moment because it looks like we are in a super focused scouting time frame. So just in case it makes me do that, obviously I don't want to miss out team needs. It's like our strongest position that has to be of the draft. I was about to say, there's no way this team's strongest position is DB. <laughs> and the weakest position really is though tight end though. If I had to, if I had to say what our weakest position is for sure. So as you can see here, top five uh, put out, we have three quarterbacks in the top five. Thankfully I don't need one, but Eric Sherman, top five, 85% scout. I guess they wanted to look at uh, quarterbacks. Can I, there you go. I almost forgot the buttons for a second. BD8, medium, eight, short eight. Gosh, dog. Whoever gets Eric Sherman is about to get a dog. 22 years old and you have three straight A's with only B on the deep accuracy. Great to elite throw power. Doesn't look like he moves that much. So he's definitely a pocket passer for sure, but a great one at that. B play action, B throw on the run, B awareness. Yo. If I did need a quarterback, though, I think we would have found him. And I would have found any way. I would have traded anything to get this number one pick. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all. And I think I got to see if it really does reflect in real life. I'm not sure if the Bears still have the number one pick in this or not. Um, but that is crazy. That is a great that is a great top quarterback. And look at this. And then another round one quarter. So we can see four quarterbacks go round one. That's pretty good. It looks like quarterback was definitely strength in this class. Halfbacks. Looks like we got three first round projections possibly obviously not a position that we're looking at don't really want a fullback receivers look like they could be pretty good six potential first rounders here's what we need tight ends so it doesn't look like i have to pick anybody for super scouting focus which is great uh and i can really kind of take my time in this in the offseason video looking at these tight ends obviously i'm looking for somebody that has speed and that can be good i mean obviously we're not going to ignore the guy that's projected round one a catching traffic catching and run blocking at six foot six, 252 pounds, Michael Atkins. Great to elite speed. Oh, this man is an athlete. Great to elite every single uh, physical category. B pass block, A sweat catch. Are we going to take a tight end with 15? Maybe. And Michael Atkins could definitely be that dude. I really like that. I love the height difference in there. I love the speed that he's got. I love all the A categories there. I keep forgetting I can look over here too and not just go ahead and jump in. I was looking at Trent Cox from Alabama, but BD route running. Not really gonna look like he's gonna be much of a catcher, even though he's a vertical threat, which is kind of sad. Here we got Chris Van Dyke. Ooh, Sean Abraham. A catch, catching traffic, B deep and route uh, run blocking, 22 years old, six foot six, 250. Good to great speed. I'm kind of looking for the more faster ones, so I can't wait for the combine and uh, pro pro days to come out. A to C medium, B shorts, B run block, A to C pass. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. That could be a, that could be another option late, round three to four. So like if we wanted to, you know, hold back, I'm definitely putting these guys then on favorites board already to have those guys kind of looked at. Offensive line, we <laughs> why you? They forgot to edit my dude fully in. Why you got a great background? <laughs> they forgot to really code in my dude's background. So he, he's just got a great screen. Oh no, not this. Rob, you got a twin named Evan McQueen. It's got the same problem. <laughs> hey no, but if we look anywhere offensive line, it definitely would probably be center. Uh, I think that's kind of where our weakest position was. Probably our oldest one too as well. Uh, so definitely here. Looking for impact block, looking for a pass block, run block mix if possible. Pete Winslow here, A impact, A to C pass, B to D run. Right here we know for sure he's got A pass blocking as a day three guy, that's pretty good. So, you know, you can never, you know, slack these day three options. It's, of course, you know, we have to pick up guys later in the draft anyway. Uh, some other areas that I wanted to look at. Look, Colt Bartley, the same thing. Day three, well, I can see why they're afraid of day three's background. Uh, but even the line we knew we were good off of left outside linebacker, a guy that could potentially come in and start and I need 
a guy that can come out and pass block. Because with the defensive scheme that we have, I need a pass coverage guy. Round two to three right here, A zone coverage. I love that already. As well as Jalen Jackson down here with A zone coverage too. Both around two to three guys. 23 years old. Six foot two twenty. Great to elite speed. Need that. B play rec. What's your man coverage? A to B. Okay. Added to the favorite was immediately Justin Mann. Jalen Jackson, two as well here. A zone coverage, 22 years old. Great to elite speed. A to C zone coverage. We can at least, you know, put him on the board, keep eyes on him. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is what we're going to be doing kind of in the offseason. I just wanted to kind of get a quick look at this draft class, see what it had to offer. Obviously, we want to get, you know, depth at, you know, like middle linebacker at DB. Ooh, field general, A zone coverage. Anytime I see a linebacker with A zone coverage, I'm immediately putting them on the board, especially if it's like a defensive A, not like an A to B, A to C. If it just says A, definitely going on the board now. We see a top five corner here in J Jaleel Dukes. I doubt he'll slip back to us, but looks like he could be a strong prospect as well. A man to man guy with B zone coverage is great. Uh, so there's, uh, looks like three first round options, a couple more second round, so mid round options, which will probably be where we end up going. So I'll definitely take a deeper look at the DB class here a little bit later. Free safety, since like we got a couple of first round options. I love that. Hmm. So we can go multiple directions here. So it's, it depends on, and how I like to draft as far as which one I decide to go through with my first overall pick is definitely going to be off of what do I have more depth at? Where do I have more guys that I like? So like, for example, tight end, we like the guy that could potentially go really high, but there's also a guy in round three to four, similar talent, similar talent level that I wouldn't mind getting either. Okay. So if I can wait back to three or four to get him, is there a safety that I don't want to wait back on anymore? And I want to take that first of our pick. So that's how we're going to go about getting those new players in, man. I hope you guys did enjoy this little intro video, man. We definitely got some things to do this off season uh, to help build this team up. And the screen that I want to start using more too, as well as the just line of screen. I don't ever go to this screen and look, but it's a great way to look at the team kind of like as a whole. Now, of course, they're going to show Gardner Minshew as quarterback because Anthony Richardson is still hurt, but he is the starter. And I like what this team's looking like already. I see a lot of gray, see a couple of goals here. We want to just make sure we change that too. I didn't, I didn't know Josh Downs actually had um, hidden development too as well. Ooh, 22 years old rookie. He's probably just going to end up with star, but definitely going to be wide receiver number two. If he's not already listed down the depth chart, which it looks like he's not. Can I do that from over here? There we go. Yeah, definitely want to list him as wide receiver too. Uh, Mole Alley Cox at tight end right now. Defensively, this is honestly where the most work is going to be needed to be done, uh, especially back at the safety positions. Oh, wait, Brents? Maybe I will sleep on you, my dog. Julius Brents has hidden development too as well. Zone corner. What are your ratings? 76 zone. Dude, that man coverage needs to get way better, but a chance to start development. I mean... Might not need corner as much as I thought I did. What are you, 74? I mean, we could always use a nickel corner. So, I mean, that's a, a first, but I mean, definitely could use some safety help. Uh, at least fix up this linebacker spot, get a backup middle linebacker, because just having two linebackers is not going to cut it. Yeah, this team, this team's got some things it can work with. I'm really excited to get this series up and off the ground. That's why I, went, I was going to wait to do this one, because I definitely have feedback that I want you guys to give down below. I'll need to know how you guys want the series. That's the most important thing. Am I playing slow sim? I will, a poll will be going up. Would have already gone up. Actually, at the time of me dropping this, I think a week ago. Uh, Cause you know, at this point that I'm recording it, the series still isn't done with the movie show reveal, but during that last week, kind of going last week of January, first week of February, right before this comes out, there'll be a poll up in the community tab asking which way you guys would like the series to go. So please make sure you guys go answer that or at least comment on this video. So I know what we're going to do with the series moving forward. Like I said, I will at least record the offseason video, though, before I take into account those results, uh, because that will be post commentary no matter what. But before we jump into the regular season, um, we will be, you know, I'll wait and wait and get feedback. Because also the other feedback is too, do you guys want to see preseason? That I really don't mind. If you guys want me to, we can live stream. If you guys will pull up and show up to it, we can live stream the preseason. I'll figure out a way to do it. You know, I'll watch a couple of streaming tutorials. I haven't done it in forever, but. We'll live stream the preseason so that way you guys can see maybe different position battles after we get into the draft and see if we have any. Uh, at least right now, at the major positions, I don't see any position battles going down. Anthony Richardson is our dude. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys did enjoy the video here today. It's been your boy, SGG, aka The King Games, aka Coach Cooper. And I will catch you guys in the next Colts rebuild video, baby. Sit back, strap yourselves in. We got another long series set and on top for you guys this season. Looking to improve some of those numbers. You see the offense. 
was pretty good. The defense lacking. So we'll build that defense up. We'll get the pass game up, get Anthony Richardson's arm strong. And yeah, Coach Cooper is here. He's here to stay. Let's see how quickly we can go get the Colts their ring. I wouldn't say that they deserve this year, but at least get them back in the postseason like they probably deserve this year. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out for the day. Later.